And we are live, everyone. Hello, 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 everyone. My name is Diamond Rivera of Diamond Rivera Films. And again, we have another episode of Live Discussions with Diamond. And today we are featuring the one and only Will Nieves. Hey, guys. How's it going? How's everybody going? <laughs> Hope everybody's awesome today. I mean, the fact that you just got out of your class and you're heading right into this interview, um, I thank you. I commend you. I respect that because I know you, gotta you just go, had... you gotta go. Got to go back to back to back. Just keep going. You know? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. And for me, I mean, knowing you for so many years, yeah. um, we kind of go way, way back. And I mean, yeah. even back to your Lorenz days. Yeah, Lorenz, those guys. Yeah, yeah. they love me apparently. So yeah, <laughs> but you know, I definitely we'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk about that. That'll be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but today, um, I really want the audience to kind of get uh, a better understanding of Will because a lot of times they just see you on stage, they see you in your studios. Uh, you have a lot of students that just come and go, but at least today we kind of get a, a better glimpse and a better understanding of Will. So, I mean, uh, at least, well, just to start off to just to introduce yourself and then kind of going all the way back to the beginning. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, so my name is Will Nieves. Uh, I am 36 years old, I think, by now. I stopped counting after 30. <laughs> so. 35, I'm 35, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. My family is purely Puerto Rican. My father migrated here when he was about 16. And my mother was born in Florida, um, and we're both, they were both Puerto Rican. They met up in New York. My father barely still speaks English. He doesn't even mm. know how he, he, doesn't, he doesn't even have a cell phone yet. Uh, <laughs> he's, old, he's an old school Puerto Rican dude. So um, yeah, uh, so I grew up. Uh, I graduated from St. Francis College with a business degree. Uh, my first business venture was I owned a, like a, an Italian-ish kind of restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, during that time, I started taking uh, dance classes. So uh, my first dance school was was Lorenz and Queens. Yes, I started there. Shout out to like my boy Andres Medina, Andre Irving, uh, Elvis Colado that started Melanie, Melanie Castillo also. A bunch of us mm. started there. Um, I was there for a couple of years, um, and then I got on the dance team. And then uh, something interesting happened at that studio with another instructor. I don't know if I want to get too much detail into that, <laughs> but uh, he was my first instructor. Things happened. Uh, we can maybe go back into that later. I like to talk, you know. It's too much detail on that, yeah. but um, ended up uh, leaving there. Then uh, I was with Nelson Flores for about two years. Gotcha. So what's up, Nelson? Destiny Garcia was my partner actually for about six months, eight months. Okay. Um, she's mad cool. Um, and after Nelson Flores, I started kind of doing my own thing. Um, so I think I was dancing about five years and I decided to open up my own studio. Um, and then here we are now, like seven, eight years later. Absolutely. And I think what you were saying before is that you had graduated from St. Francis College with yeah. a business degree. So do you think that business degree and you already being ingratiated into the scene and helped you have a better understanding on how to have a studio? Um, I don't. Uh, yes and no. It takes okay. a lot to own a studio. You know, uh, you know, shout out to the other studio owners like Bill Canela, Salsa Salsa, you know, um, Cache Studio, Marcus Nieves, all of them. Uh, my homeboys, we would do some uh, Huracan. We all talk a lot. And um, I think to the degree, you need to have a business background, right? Yes. But I think you need to not just be a business person. There's a lot of it actually is dealing with people um, and it's, it's very community oriented. So I would say that's, that's the hardest thing I think for me in this business. It's, it's, it's people because there's so many people, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, there's a lot of studio owners that have their own way of, you know, I saw a couple of things that you did with a couple of the other people that have schools and stuff. You know, some of them are like, you know, this is the way I run it. That's it. Yes. You know, I'm a little bit more open to, you know, you want to do this, you want to do that. You know, it's cool. And there, there's pros and cons to that, honestly. Mm -hmm. So, which is interesting. Like, I remember you had a, you had a discussion. Uh, am I allowed to name other people or no? That, I mean, that's up to you as long as yeah. it's in a respectful manner. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember you had a conversation with, um, with, with Device, right? Um, one, yes. One, yeah. one thing you guys talked about was if, like, I forgot what it was, but if people don't want to rotate or if it's woman on woman or something like that. Yes, it was just an, uh, was sorry. That, to, was, can you, can you, that, that hit my head a little bit. Can you remind me what that was about again? Absolutely. Yeah. The issue was there was an incident when um, there was a review, I believe, on Yelp or Google that a couple who was a same sex couple had joined, had oh. went to a class and I believe they were told uh, that they should they could not partner with with one another. 
right. while they were dancing. And I, and for me, it was more along the lines of saying that if a person, no matter what orientation they put, they mm -hmm. choose to identify with, if they're paying for your class, they should be able right. to take your class without any judgment. So that one was again about the now because they were both of the same sex. Yes. He didn't. They wanted to just so the 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 two ladies right wanted mm -hmm. to dance with just women right and one wanted to be a lead one wanted to be a follower was that yes what it? I believe along that lines it was just more yeah. of those that couple feeling comfortable uh, dancing as a lead and follow with one another okay, during cool. that segment. That's it. That's interesting because I allow anyone to. Whatever. So, you know, when we when I first opened up the studio, right, everything was like she, he, she, right? Yes. She turned, he turned, she turned, he turns, right? Yes. So after being in the studio for a couple of years and it's just, you know, I'm, I'm also in Williamsburg, right? I have two studios. I have mm -hmm. one in Williamsburg and one in the Bronx, right? Yes. So each, each, each environment is very different, you know? In Williamsburg is a lot of just anything, like anything goes, which is cool. Yes. Everybody's story, right? So... In the beginning, I was always open to, you want to be a lead, you want to be a follower, you can dance with whoever, always, mm -hmm. you know? So I've never any, put anybody to the side, you could just jump right in. I will say though that if you are a female and you want to lead, right? Mm -hmm. I think ladies are a little more open to dancing with a woman, you know? But yeah. I've, had, I've had issues with, with men uh, wanting to be a follower. And- gotcha. And it's tricky because I'm open to it, very open to the idea. Mm -hmm. I'm actually one of the first ones in New York City to actually dance with men, like Antonio Doza, you know, yeah. he's my homeboy. I mean, I remember the time, you know, it was one of the first times men started dancing with men. And I think I'm, yeah. one, you know, shout out to Sandro, Sandro, if you're watching. Yeah, you know, Sandro. I, was one of, I was always one of the front runners to dance with men. Like I have no, have no issue with it, you know? And it started becoming more of like a little bit of a trend I noticed in the socials. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. I'm not saying I started it, but I definitely helped kind of lead the way a little bit more because people feel mm -hmm. a little more comfortable or, oh, this is cool, right? But I will say that in going back, I've had issues where some of the leaders, right? They're just not ready to take that step to dance with a guy, right? So then I have to then respect that person as well, right? Absolutely. Because if, if somebody if somebody doesn't want to dance with somebody, then you know, and then sometimes, uh, and this is rare. This is rare. I'm um, you know, mm -hmm. it's not. I'm saying like, um, this happens a lot. But I definitely have instances where like a guy's like, nah, I'm not dancing with um, this dude. You know, that's not what. That's not what yeah, I absolutely. do. Absolutely, absolutely. I was like, you know, okay, cool. And just but on the other on the other you know spectrum on that, it's like you're making the person kind of feel bad because the person's just there on the side waiting. You know, so mm -hmm. it's tricky. You know. Yeah, um, but I'm always open to it. I do. Uh, if I do have guys that want to follow, you know, I do tell them that, you know, just you might get, you know, some people might not feel comfortable. You have to be OK with that as well. You have to also teach both sides of it. Right. And it's tricky because I, you know, I agree with, you know, he has one has an opinion, one has another opinion. And I think we just have to learn how to be respectful to each other. You know, so it's tricky. Yeah. I mean, now, mm -hmm. no, absolutely. What were you going to say? I said that once once my students start getting comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say let's say like so we do like cycles in my school, right? So like let's say somebody's been dancing for like four or five six months, then then the men are the, then the leaders, right? A little more open to dancing with another guy or, or a person that wants to be a follower, you know? Yes. Um, so I, I do tell some people like you know you know in the beginner classes like brand new, you know, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a little you know I don't want to you know I just want to warn you like this is how some people may take it, you know? Most people are usually cool with it, but I don't, want, I just don't want you to feel bad and I don't want the other person to feel some type of way as well. So if somebody has some experience, I say, you know, maybe try going to like a level two or three. The guys are way more open to it because, you know, they have more experience, you know? Yeah. And it takes a little bit of them to just be more open to it, you know? But that, that, takes, that takes, you know, education. And mm -hmm. um, I think I saw a post that um, this girl named Leah, Leah Robertson. I think she's Franklin, Frankie Martinez's. Uh, yes, student. Leah. Yes. Yeah, I like what she posts up a lot of really positive stuff, so, you know, so shout out to her. Mm -hmm. I think I saw something that she put up and um, like how to make a change, right? And people were like, whatever. And one thing I, I like what she said was education. You know, you got to mm -hmm. educate as through education, people are going to learn how to learn how to cope with certain things, you know? So through our studio, um, you know, all, all colors, all races, uh, you know, lead, follow, it doesn't matter. We just, we want to combine everybody and, and, and through education, we can just all kind of grow together. You know what I'm saying? So I just believe in positivity, energy, you know, so. Absolutely. And, and I believe in our scene, especially in New York, it's definitely there's been a really a big shift. Like you said, 
um, mm-hmm. you being one of the first few people in our salsa scene to really be inclusive and dance with men who are follows. Because yeah. I, from my experience of 10 plus years ago, that unfortunately wasn't the case or the comfort level wasn't as, as, as it is now. It was unheard of, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get I, it. I mean, I remember, I remember this one time I went to, I was at Taj, right? Uh-huh. And I had, I met, I was cool with Antonio Dozo at the time. Yes. We already, we already danced with each other a bunch of times. And there's one, uh, I brought like a couple of students to Taj and this one lady goes, hey, is this, is this like a gay club or something? And they were like, mm-hmm. no, this, this is, it's okay. You know, we're dancers and we're just dancing. It yeah. just happens to be the same sex. And one is a lead, one is a follow. So they couldn't really comprehend that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. I've definitely, you know, if, if you do this, like, and then like, there's a salsa scene, right? Yeah. Congresses and socials. And then there's like this kind of mix scene with regular people, right? Mm-hmm. Like Taj, Iguanas bring regular people, right? So people that, you know, go to like these studios to dance, like a dance board and stuff like that. People already understand and they're cool with it. You're, you're more open to it. But if you go to like these clubs, they kind of look at you like, what, like, what is this? You know what I'm yes. saying? This is weird. So it is what it is. I don't care. You know, I, you know, I, 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 I'm having a good time. I love to dance with whoever, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and, and a lot of times they're actually, you know, they're more enjoyable. Like I love to dance with Antonio. He's good, you know, yeah. and it's fun, you know? So it's just education, I believe, but yeah, it's just tricky. Yeah, I mean, for me, like you said, education is important. Um, being open because just because if you're not comfortable with dancing with someone of the same sex doesn't give you the right to yeah. confront someone who is. But I would say as well, like when you talked about um, coming from Lorenz and then uh, moving on, you had a venture business in a hot food and hospitality field. Right. And then that, I guess, was that the transition into having your own studio? Yeah, I mean, after I came from about three or four different schools um, and I have a business degree and I already had something, you know, I kind of I kind of put a lot of the stuff that they had and mm-hmm. I made it my own, you know, um, and I created my own kind of structure and way I do my classes and, and price point and stuff like that. Um, you know, and it made sense and it worked out and it's, we've been doing pretty well besides the shutdown that we all got. But, yes. you, know, you know, we're all it, it is what it is, you know, so. And, you know, when you learn, when you learn from someone, whether it's a move mm-hmm. or, or knowledge, you know, the mm-hmm. idea is not to just take it and just like just specifically use it, like make it your own, you know, yeah. make it better, make it because it's your knowledge. Right. So I believe in that knowledge and whatever the energy you learn, like bring it to the world and help, you know, and show other people and teach other people and through that, like build a community. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So. Yeah. And then you were saying that you had uh, been with different companies or different dance studios. Yeah. Um, could you kind of give us an idea of, did you take anything from that that helped you when you uh, started your own school? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the marketing I already had like down of the way I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the way the different class structures, it was interesting. Like, you know, Lorenz would have like two hour classes, an hour and an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nelson Flores would do like an hour class, like 20 minute shines and, and 40 minutes like partner work. It was much quicker, much faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, the price points in the city are different from the price points outside. So I took like all that knowledge and I kind of made it my own. And then I created my own like structure, you know, like um, one thing that I've learned in partner work mm-hmm. that I see, you know, again, now every school is different. Um, so that's cool. The way I've learned it, I've learned it like they call it a move, right? Like mm-hmm. she turn, he turn, she turns, or Copa, uh, you know, merry-go-round. Like there's, there's names of moves, right? And yes. I, I learned to kind of like, oh, like this can be done, for example, like a girl's right turn, mm-hmm. right? You could do it with like the left hand or the right hand or with both hands. You know, something I learned from Juan Calderon, which was cool, was he learned, he taught me, uh, you ever heard of like the seven, seven handholds? Yes, heard I've heard of them. I have heard of them. So like a combination of like, you know, what, what I've learned from people and then plus other instructors like him and plus other people as well, because I, I, I listen to a lot of people. I was like, oh, cool. I can create my own structure of like learning how to dance, you know? So, you know, um, and it's fun. You know, I'm, I'm just happy people are having a good time with it, you know? So, yeah. From the transition of then becoming a teacher and then having your own studio, did, the res- did you feel like the responsibility changed or did you feel that um, with you now being a studio owner, 
that your role had to be more intensified or did you just was the comfort level kind of easy um well there's a when you when you when you run a business there's a lot of pressure on you to mm -hmm. to make money right because you got to mm -hmm. support the bills so when you're an artist and you want to perform and do all this stuff um when you run a business sometimes it takes away from the artistry a little bit because you're yes. focusing on making money making the dollar and you know first first things first for me you know I, business is a business right then after that comes everything else like it's you know art education and stuff like that but you got to pay the bills you got to make sure you know people pay on time you got to make sure all this all this foundational stuff is the most important thing that i feel like people don't understand like you know people just pay for a dance class and they just go in and they have a great time but um even like my business partner her name is kathy um yes. I, 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 by the way i don't own the studio my entirely i have a business partner and she's gotcha. uh, been with me for like eight years and she runs a lot of the back end that a lot of people mm. don't see so you know a lot of the studio owners probably have the same thing you know you could probably talk to them they probably have like a little person who does all the other stuff on the side that yes. is all the booking stuff you know um but that's the most important crucial thing to run a business you know all the art stuff and what you see at the shows and the congresses and, and the teaching the classes that comes secondary you know and sometimes i got to make like tough decisions you know like if i have a class that's kind of small but it's an advanced class and I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love to teach like advanced stuff, you know, but mm -hmm. if, I, if there's only like maybe eight registered in that class and I know I can open up a new beginner class of like 50 people, then something's got to get cut, you know, and I got to make hard yeah. choices. And it's tricky because like, then that's how people, I feel like a person like me, a, a studio like me, kind of bring, kind of brings up the people from the ground up. Like they've never taken a class before. They don't, okay. They've never been on a dance team, you know? And a lot of students kind of bring them up to like a certain level. Yeah. And then they start seeing the world. They're like, oh, this is, I didn't even know this was out here. Oh, this, this, this is a salsa world, you know? <laughs> and then, you know, they start going to other teams and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, that's what I see a lot, a lot of the time. It happens to me, you know, a bunch of times, you know, a bunch of other uh, t uh, studio owners as well. But that's part of the game. You know, people need to grow and, and you know, continue their journey, you know? Absolutely. And then, from when you first started in Lorenz until present day, could you kind of give us a glimpse of stuff that you saw change that you felt were positive, but also negative in our scene? For what? For the, for the uh, scene? For the scene itself, like of you growing within the scene, um, like you said, with different, there's so many dance studios now that a lot yeah. of times people get lost is that a lot of the schools that we're seeing might not have the best curriculum. It's more right. about, you know, for me, I grew up in a school that had structure and I see a school like yourself that has the example of having structure, having beginner at band, I mean, intermediate at bands classes. Yeah. Um, uh, I, there, <coughs> there's a couple of different ways I see the schools do them. Some mm -hmm. have like open level classes, right? Yeah. Some have like, okay, like level one, open level. But what does an open level mean? Does that mean a person who just their first class ever, or that person who been dancing one to three months and you jumble them all in? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then it's tricky with all the different levels because people start bouncing around. Um, but, you know, if it works for them, it works for them. You know, so like I can't say one is right or wrong. I think we're just all a little different in how we structure yes. it. Um, I do it more like I start a new class and then those people stay on a journey together and they keep growing. And then it kind of fizzles off after like six, seven months and then they have to bounce to another class, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that structure is kind of cool because week to week we learn from we, you know, we, we build on last week and whatever, whatever, you know, so everyone's a little different. Uh, and I've, I've seen all the different styles and I will, I think it's growing. I mean, I think I've seen the scene, I think the salt scene is growing and there's more places, but mm -hmm. it might be a little saturated a little bit with all yeah. the events maybe. I got you. But <laughs> it is, I don't know. It is what it is. It's tough. And now they're closing down all these places. Now what? Copa's closed, dance sports closed. Yeah. Uh, Gans Gansboard, what is it called? Gansboard yeah, Gansboard Market. Uh, that they had yeah. Sabado Saturdays. That's yeah. an event by DJ Johnny that closed. Yeah, yeah. And we're Alex seeing. Was doing, uh, yeah, Alex was doing uh, the dance sport on yeah. Salsa Mania. Yes. And then and Alejandro, you know, he's doing cachet. So shout out to all you guys. I mean, you guys, you know, them, they, they, you know, I love what they do. I love all their music. Um, and I, I'm feeling for them right now. I mean, this is going to be tough. I don't know how. I don't know what's going to happen in 21, you know, like what's going to happen, but we'll see. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then when, so my question also is when you first, what was the, the feeling like, or what was the overall atmosphere when you started your, your school? Like the, was the rate of students just off the charts or was it kind of like a three-year process? 
Um, the first month we opened up, uh, started off with like, that first month was like 70 students. It was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, my studio right now before COVID, we were hitting like, like 300 students a month. We were doing really well. I also have a kids program as well. And I remember okay. I have a studio in the Bronx too. Yes. So that was, we were all doing really well. Um, and it was growing. It was like, we were doing better than the past couple of years and the COVID hit and it was like, oh, it just shut us all down, you know? So mm -hmm. And now, now it's like you have to rebuild everything back over, which, which really sucks, you know? So, and people are still scared, so I don't know what's going to happen. I believe all the studios are going to – I saw in Jersey yeah. uh, they're starting to open up already, right? Yes, I did, I did see. I mean, for me, my, my only thing is – and also in New York. You're having – New Jersey, you have some studios opening up. Um, in New York-wise, I know of just, like, outdoor classes that have been happening. And okay. for, for me um, – as a person who's in this scene, I'm the only my concern is the safety of others yeah. because mm -hmm. I, I really don't understand sometimes how a lot of people don't see the effects of what's been happening, whether it be people's businesses, whether it be people's health, because there are some dancers that have been affected by this virus. There yeah. are some dancers that are unfortunately no longer here because of it. And my thing is when people choose to then open up and grant it, Especially in New York, we're hitting up. I think Monday we're hitting stage four, or if we're okay. not, in, I believe so. If it's not Monday, I know it's coming. Except yeah. for indoor dining, so there's certain because I work in the food and hospitality field, so okay. I'm still waiting. But my biggest thing is if you're gonna open up in, in any form of capacity, whether it be limitations, please making sure that your students are safe yeah. because mm -hmm. having masks having temperature checks, having safety guidelines in place. Cause a lot of times people are just focused on the monetary gain and yeah. not looking at the long end result. I think that the way it should be done, and this, this is the way I'm going to do it. Um, everyone's going to get a temperature check before they start taking a class. Um, I believe you got to be 97 degrees. If anything like higher than that, then you can't, you can't come in. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to, you know, we're going to put a little social distance, like little, little pat, you know, pads yeah, on the floor. Yeah. So you're like between like five, six feet apart and doing shines. Um, I'm going to try and do partner dancing, but no contact, meaning mm -hmm. that you're in front of each other. Let's say like four or five feet apart. And like, you know, I tell you to pick up the hand on one. You're not touching each other. And then the follower just when she sees the hand goes up, goes for the turn, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, we're going to try that out, see how it goes. I know some studios are just doing shines. Um, the other tricky thing with with uh, with like. There's also, in my opinion, different types of studios, right? Like you got, uh -huh. like, a, you got like a Zafire, like a Young Lay. Yeah. Like, I think they get more like people who have already been dancing for a while, majority, yes. right? Not necessarily like a beginner that didn't know anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Where me is like straight up, doesn't even, never even heard of the salsa world, right? Yeah. So we all have to structure ourselves a little. We're all, each business is a little different, you know? Like some of those guys focus more on performing and can book for shows. Mm -hmm. Where like maybe a school like mine is more for like dance teams and fun. So if you think about it, we're, we're both in the environment of salsa, but um, each demographic is different and each owner has to learn how to approach um, how they need to deal with something, you know, between them. Like, you know, I think I saw some people rehearsing and they're already touching each other and, you know, some yeah. of them have masks and don't like, you know, I mean, it, I, I guess that's okay if they both got checked and, you know, and they're just around each other, you know? Yeah. I think that's okay because, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, if I have a, like seven people in my house and, and I know them, none of them are sick, I guess that's okay. But, I mean, I don't know. that Everyone's a little different, you know? Yeah. So, no, it's true. And, and I really just appreciate at least that you're saying that, again, you know, just having some sort of safety guidelines in place yeah, and yeah. giving those measures and that attention to it is commendable right. because I've even been seeing privately that there are people in New York, a person who had COVID, is actually having events and beaches uh -huh. with public, yeah. And I get, I understand uh -huh. it's outdoors, but yeah, this is information that a lot of uh, that I'm getting uh -huh. myself. And see that the <laughs> <laughs> and yo, the, the salsa scene is the salsa scene is like pr it's pretty small if you think about it, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, you know, and with a, a lot of things that are going on right now, and people are like, you know, everything's you know, COVID. You got Black Lives Matter. You got all this. You got, you know. Uh -huh race war is gender war, all these things happening, you know? Um, and it's interesting how people are now coming out the woodworks and they're saying how they really feel and people are getting offended by it, you know? 
So it's like a really like a uh, sensitive time, you know, for people, I think, you know, um, and I will say that, you know, it's, I, I always looked at the soft scene as like, um, everyone's like a friendly acquaintance, you know, like mm -hmm. I say hi to you and we dance, but I, you're not like my friend. Like, I don't really know you, know you, you know yes. what I'm saying? We never had one of those conversations where we have a drink and we cry together and we talk about our, you know, our family and, but you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I think people also need to understand that, um, you know, people are acquaintances, like trying not to get too emotionally caught up in people. Yeah. Um, Cause you don't know, you don't really know how they, how they are unless you have like deep one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. Yeah. Even if like you have group conversations, at, like at a diner after like, you know, a party, uh, after like a social or whatever, like have you ever had like a one-on-one -on -one deep conversation? Let's oh, talk. Absolutely. You know, I think people need to have more of those to really see, all right, who's my friend, who's really not my friend, or, mm -hmm. you know, who's an acquaintance, because I just see everybody as an, as an acquaintance, you know, I really, I don't have, I really have a select few friends that I consider, like, yeah, my friends, movies, you know, so yeah. that, that's another thing I would just kind of, kind of tell people, like, you know, just, I can understand people upset, I, I you know, I've, certain things upset me too, but I, I try not to get political, I just, you know. It oh, is yeah, it is, you know, no, I completely, so. I completely appreciate yeah. your honesty, because again, we are in a time We've been in a time for a long time, but I think with the quarantine, it's just allowed people to really collect their thoughts and just speak their truths. And with us being away from dance, and I, I've been saying this in a lot of my episodes, but I believe it's true, is that when we were dancing, we've been having these issues, but we yeah. weren't talking about it. We were just right. being like, hey, let's have fun. Let's enjoy each other's time. No matter how I might feel about something you did or said, I'll just leave it alone for now and then bring it up at a later time. Right. And, you know, and, and nowadays, I mean, especially with this quarantine happening, again, this is something unknown to us. And then a really what we've been seeing in our community is our schools in different parts of the U.S. closing. Yeah. A lot of institutions are closing or put at a halt. And a lot of people, again, just want to get outside and breathe fresh air and see the people they're close with. Completely yeah. understandable. But again, just like you said, you've seen um, people having classes that some people are wearing masks and some don't. And I've even had a person who's having an outdoor class that I spoke to them privately and trying to gauge is what their thought process was with at the beginning, not putting information about being safe. And it was more right. along the lines of, they're adults. They can do what they want. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. No, you have to be like, you have to put, you have to set some guidelines up, I think. Um, Cause it's not just that person's safety. It's everyone else's safety around that person. Yes. Right? So you do. Um, and I hope people understand that, uh, you know, DJs, studio owners, teachers, like everyone's getting hit pretty hard, you know? Yeah. And I, I speak to some of them, you know, and they're like, you know, I hope some people are like, you know, definitely don't open up your school. Right. Don't mm -hmm. give any class. Don't do it. And I'm like, look, like I'm going to do it the safest way I can. You know yes. what I'm saying? The safest way I can. But like, look, you can't tell me like I can't try to work, you know, Yeah. because people are also taking the train every day. People are mm -hmm. going to work. You're you're in my opinion, you go to Costco, you go to Home Depot. You're going to you're around, you know, you're going to protest and all for yeah. a good cause. I get it. hundred percent, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, you know, we also need to try and through, through safety guidelines, still try to get, try to get back to work, you know? So yeah. understand like all the entertainers that are really messed up right now, theater, yeah. people, you know, artists, whatever, like, you know, you're, you're telling someone that they studied something for eight years, 10 years, 12 years. And you're saying like, you're not essential, you, you know, yeah. you're not, it, it, it makes them feel some type of way. So I want to do have that kind of back give a backbone to like that voice. Yes. But I also respect the people where I'm not ready to come back. I'm not, and that, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, but absolutely. please allow us to still try to come back. Yeah. We still need to make a living. So um, when I saw some of the people putting up posts of opening up, even for me, it was like, Ooh, like you want to put it up so early? Like yeah. I wonder how, how people are going to, people are going to get met. Like, because you 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 do you put something wrong on Facebook and I, I can see people just attacking attacking. Yeah. So it's like you gotta be really careful what you put up, you know. Thanks. And everyone else also just please understand what some of us are going through, and we we also just want to get back to work. And also, there's a lot of people that want to come back to dancing. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm not saying full contact, no mask. I'm saying, yo, put me six feet apart. I need to be around 
10 people, you know, like yeah. I haven't seen, I haven't communicated with 10 people in all this time. Like there's also the mental aspect of, of people just like being shut down for three, four months and then being yeah. depressed. Like the other thing that people don't understand is like dance is an outlet, right? People it love is. it. It's a way for the, I just did a private lesson just now, like two hours ago, you know, and you know, I, I even asked my student and I was like, you want your mask on? No mask. She was like, nah, she's like, no mask. We're the only ones in the room. I'm like, all right, I'm going to keep the mask on for a little bit. If you're mm -hmm. cool, then whatever, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not sick. You're not sick. Like, okay, cool. One-on-one, -on -one. no big deal. You yeah. know? And afterwards she was like, oh my God, thank you so much. Four months of not dancing, you know? So, yeah, you know, it, it, I can imagine the mental capacity of how people feel right now too. That's another no, topic. I, no, it is, it is true because again, um, I believe with us as humans, socialization is truly important. Being yeah. with a lack of just another human being and you're, and we're so used to being around people. Don't get me wrong. We got people that just are very introverted and to themselves. But with a, a community that we have, people love to be around other people. So, yeah. I mean, for me, it's like to have the clarity and the context from you as a studio owner saying that you do implement these um, these guidelines or you will in the future when you do have your, your larger classes is understandable. Because, again, in New York City, our phases are going up, which are allowing the limitations and the capacities to increase. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so for me as well, at least after touching this COVID situation, kind of going back into your start in the dance studios. So when we, I believe it was the Brooklyn location in Williamsburg, that was the yeah. first one. Was right. there a lesson that you learned from when then you opened the second location? Um, I... On the on the business side, I think it, I was doing. But you know, one of the things that I had to learn how to do was to be good at running running the teams. You know, mm -hmm. I think the, I think I think the dance teams for me were the most difficult because, um, and maybe it's my fault. I get very friendly with my students. We become like friends. You know, go out for a drink. You know, have an argument, have mm -hmm. fun, laugh together, cry together, and then. You know, um, I think what I could have done better is keep things more business oriented. Okay, so not, you, yeah, yeah, so you had learned from yeah. just probably mistakes you had made in the past and understanding yeah. how. Okay. And again, I'm I'm also, I'm also not perfect. I have my own I have my own style. I have my own way of doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, some directors are like strict. Some directors are chill. You know, so I try to be like a little bit in the middle of both. And um, you know, people come and go. You know, and that's the other tricky thing too is like. Um, I try to be a little bit more diplomatic in a way where, uh, like, if there's 10, 10 to, I don't know, if my team was, like, 14 people, right? Yeah. And you got 14 different opinions. You got 14 different energies. You got 14 different, you know. And one person says, oh, we should do this or do that or give ideas and blah, blah, you know. So it became kind of tricky in the beginning to just, no, this is the way I'm going to do it, right? And everyone just... I didn't want to kind of be like that either. I didn't want to be like like, like a Hitler, but like, look, you just listen to me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? This is what we're going to do. But it is tricky when you do let people get a voice and then now, every, now there's all these voices and then you start to lose yourself, you know? Mm. Um, so that was another interesting thing because um, I'm very friendly. I'm very, I'm very relaxed and very chill. Um, and, you know, N Nelson Flores is like that. I love Nelson. He's very yeah. chill, funny. Nelson's like my homeboy. Like, hey, you laugh around. I was like, oh, I could do this. I could run a studio. I could do it. Yeah. And then you start doing it like, oh, and then I see the way some other people do it. And it's like, come in at this time. Are you off the team? Blah, blah, blah. You know, things like that. So, and those are the ones, those are, those are good for the more competitive people, you know? So Absolutely. everyone's different. And I think I've learned to, okay, I, I, I know how I, you know, how I should do it. But that was hard. That was tricky for me. Definitely dealing with people. Yeah. That was hard. Because <laughs> you're dealing with more than yourself. You're dealing with people's attitudes. Yeah. Uh, just people's ideas they want to just throw around sometimes and like when you have to kind of separate yourself from being a friend to being a studio owner to being a, yeah. you know an instructor so i, I completely get you know, it was, you know it's tricky too like if you um and again i think it's location too like i'm in williamsburg right next to the city right so like if you get like a group of people and they start getting like really good really good really good yeah right and the, and the team for me is like sometimes i gotta bring people from the bottom up Right. Yes. Um, and then some of them are like, oh, I feel like I'm being held back because we're bringing in a lower, lower dancer. Yeah. I'm like, look, we're a team. We're bringing which one this is how we build it up. You know, pyramid, you know, we build the bottom up. And mm. I would like you to help this person get to your level or whatever. Like it's all whatever. And some people are a little selfish, which is OK, too. 
You know, yeah. I used to be a little upset. People, they want to be themselves. They want to grow themselves. They want to do their own thing. So they'll see like another team and they'll be like, oh, I'm going to jump in that team. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know, you know, you got to go and see the world, bro. And then yeah. the door is always open, you know? So, and then some people are more like you, if you leave you out, that's it. Never come back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's goods and bads to both. Let me tell you. Okay. <laughs> there's also things of like, you know, someone kind of leaves and then, they still have their friends in a school mm. and they talk to them and all of a sudden some of them start going, you know, yes. and, then I, and I, and I talked to other teachers like, nah, you can't let that happen. You cut that, you cut that mother flower off, you know, <laughs> and he can't come back. No problems. You're the head you cut it, you know? So yeah, it's interesting how one works for the other. So, you know, yes, because again, like you don't have, you might not have the same students right. that, can be instructed like that than other schools. Like you said, there's other schools that have more of a competitive nature and right. have been doing the same process from the beginning and it hasn't changed. Whether right. then you being the person that you are trying to uh, be like them and then it just backfires. Right, exactly. That's you know? happened to me quite a few times, but it's all good. No, and, and I appreciate too is that you can be honest in the fact of saying that, hey, I've, ha I've had many students come and go. Because right. again, we realize as a, a dance community that students and dancers evolve and they choose to go elsewhere. But it's more about just being honest, not just like yeah. I'm leaving. I just want to leave. But then you kind of figure out later on they left on different terms. And it's like, again, this community is small. We're always yeah. going to see each other. It's not that it really isn't that big. I mean, the congresses look like they're big, you know, um, but, you know, a couple of thousand people, you know, it, it, it really isn't a lot compared to like, let's say Mark Anthony does a concert, right? And yeah. Millions of people, you know. So the scene, I think people think it's really big, but in reality, it's actually kind of small if it, in comparison to like other sports and, and other things out there, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It is growing. I mean, I went to Europe. I went to, I went to Croatia. That was dope. Mm -hmm. um, that was the biggest Congress I've ever seen. That must have been like. Oh, yes. Is that the seven day Congress that it's like? Yeah. All yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, that's the and, and, and it's it's weird because like it's bigger in Europe than it is over here. Um, mm. And I think I think it's because uh, Europe has all these landlocked countries. So like everybody could just travel to the events where United States is is its own. It's its own kind of like, you know, island in between Atlantic and Pacific. Yes. So I think Europe. And Europe, or Europe is connected to Asia. Like you literally can just, it's all landlocked, right? So mm -hmm. India, so people I think are more just, you know, mixing up more and you could travel to a Congress landlocked, you know? So yeah, well, Croatia was dope. Shout out to those organizers. So yeah. Wow. And, I, and I do hope, oh, I really do hope in the future that the U.S. is allowed because as of right now, they are yeah. not allowing a lot of the U.S. citizens even to go to a lot of places in Europe. Yeah. And overseas, but you know, hopefully in, in due time things can change. But I really want people to know as well is that I myself had personally worked with you a while ago and filming one of your recitals in, in, oh, in yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah. And yeah. for me, that was an eye-opening experience because to see the presentation, to see the detail, to see um just how you carried yourself being amongst of hundreds of people, of students, of their families, of just organizers that came to support, it was yeah. really awesome because you had such a professionalism in my eyes of when you had this event and it's kind of like, it felt like a ballroom feel and it felt yeah. like a production and it, yeah. and it flowed smoothly. And for me, um, seeing how routines went from one after another and everything made sense, it was, it was for me, it was inspiring because I really want a lot of other schools and companies to follow suit. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I took that kind of recital, like, you know, the dance teams, and then we have recitals. That was kind of like my way of kind of doing it. And um, we have kids programs, too. So then we would combine all the recitals together just to kind of showcase everybody, because I think children should be showcased, you showcased as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think also a lot of these dance studios maybe should do more kids classes as well. I think I think it's really good for the minority population because dance classes are super expensive, bro. Like, yes, yes, know, yes. To put a kid in ballet is crazy, you know? And I was price pointing how much they charge. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. we have ballet classes in my school, you know? Mm -hmm. We charge nowhere near as that. And the parents are just so grateful, like, wow, thank you so much. My child can do this when I never thought I could afford this, you know? What yeah. I'm so it's just, it just cool. And we're all, we're all about the community and, and building each other up. Um, and that's what I would just like to see with the salt scene, too. Um, 
you know, I do believe it's a little competitive, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of things going on. And I, I personally don't like to post up on Facebook, anything political at all. I like to just, yeah. you know, so I, I just like promote, you know, my school and that's kind of it. Um, because you could say one, you know, you could, you could be on one side, but then offend somebody else. And when you're in a business, it's not mm -hmm. political. So I know when a lot of things were coming out, I really didn't talk a lot because I didn't really know how to, I didn't want to be on one side and not be on the other. I was like, look, everyone got their points. You know, you guys pick it. But I just, I don't want to, I don't get caught up in this. This is a fireball. <laughs> you know? yeah. like, and, and, and that's the you thing know? is that when I especially had that conversation previous with uh, Dominic from Florida, it was yeah, about. I, I watched it too. I watched it. Yeah. yeah. It was me about saying is that as a studio owner, you are a reflection of your business and you yeah. have to realize that the, uh, the messages you put out can be confronted and then that can just like really interfere with what you're trying to yeah. do in the community. Yeah. And, you know, and for me, and then seeing what you were talking about, the salsa scene is definitely very competitive. I definitely agree. Uh, but I think the lack of unity, but also the competitive nature of who can do the better routine or who can do the most tricks and flips and turns, yeah. you really get lost in what the dance was always about. When I first when I first got my teams, uh, my first like year to opening up, um, I was like, all right, we can try and catch up to these guys, you know, we got you know whatever. And then after time, when people start dropping, and then you really start realizing the how good technical like these guys and girls are with like the spinning and the tricks and the choreo and the amount of times they practice, you know, you know, I was like, all right, so now we're just gonna have fun with these guys, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> You know, for my guys, they, you know, they, they don't want to come and practice four times a week at three hour rehearsals. You know, they're like, yeah, nah. I just but I want to I want to do this and have fun, you know. And you know what? That's what we did. And, and I will say that, you know, when, when my students come out, uh, they love to party and they social dance to four in the morning and they dance with everybody, which is cool, too. That's what I like. about. The, that's what I enjoy about the South scene, too. Like, you know, I've never really had a I never, you know, besides the, a couple of ones here and there that don't want to dance with you. Or they want to say something rude or give you a face or whatever. Like I've never really had anything bad with anybody, you know? Um, and I, I, I did see a couple of posts up about, um, you know, also people social dancing with, it, with each other, not social dancing with each other. Yeah. Things like that. Like, but you know, and, and you know, I feel, I feel empathetic to everyone. So, you know, um, I just know from my experience, I haven't really felt too much of that. Um, I try to make myself inclusive. So I, I don't know, but, I do, I do empathize with everyone that do feel some type of way. So I do, you know, empathize with that. So. Absolutely. And then I, I love is that seeing throughout the years from you then becoming a studio owner and then having uh, studios in two different boroughs. And then now you have ventures like I see you have with Puerto uh, dance shoes. Yeah. And then you having the, the app on Salsa Go. Can you give us more information yeah. first? So if you guys have been seeing all the... Um, slightly annoying uh, advertisements on these Fuego shoes. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> Let me pop up on, piece of, um, on, my, on, my, on my post all the time. My, mm -hmm. One of my students actually um, actually made this brand called Fuego. He's actually my okay. student. Yeah, yeah. We actually talked about it prior to um, Fuego Dance Shoes. His name is Kevin. Okay. Uh, he, was in my, he was in my school, and he thought of the idea of, hey, the, I don't really see any – sneaker shoe where you can do outdoor indoor. I haven't really seen so much of that. I was like, oh, that's a cool idea. Why don't you make some? And then he started researching. I'm pretty sure he researched all the all the current companies right now, like Jose Bota and stuff like that. Whatever. Yes. And he hit a different market up. You know, I, I, I helped him out too. I introduced him to like uh, Island Touch, to a couple of people. Mm -hmm. um, he started network. He did a lot though. I'm just saying, I mean, like, I did not, I did very little. You know, I give him 100% of the credit. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I did introduce him to like a couple of people, maybe help him out a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's doing great. I mean, selling a bunch of shoes and his shoes are pretty cool. I mean, they spin well. You can wear them outdoor, indoor, you know, something new for the community. And we don't have this, right? So, hey. Yeah, know, I mean, because cool. like you said, we do have shoes like Jose Botas. We have for females and males, Berju. But a lot of times they're kind of subject to the indoors and the flooring yeah. has to be a certain way. So I definitely love, because I've been seeing a lot of the promotion for Fuego. Yeah. And having our dancers that we see all the time be a part of it is really right. great. And the most important thing I think is to, you know, if, if there is a if there's a need, and I think one need was people come from the street and they don't want to bring a bag with them. This is a perfect in the middle, you know. Now you can wear them, 
they look really nice. They're the, the color tones are, are pretty solid, so they can kind of mm. match with a lot of different stuff. It's not over the top. Um, and you can go in, dance, and come back out. You don't have to worry about a bag or losing a bag and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Congratulations to him. That was great. Definitely. So. You know, it's definitely good just to see our dancers, the people that can come from the studios, then creating something for their community. Yeah, that was great. It's definitely. And then at least now from the Fuego, you definitely now have the uh, the app on. Yeah, the app is over here. It's called yes. Salsa Go. Now, this this bad boy has mm -hmm. been in. It just took me forever to build. It must have costed us over like 20, 30 grand already on this freaking app. Oh, wow. But, um, the idea of the app is to make a platform for different artists to put up their videos. Um, so if any dancers want to sell videos online or a platform to do it, um, they can contact me on my on my messenger, um, and we can upload your videos. And then hopefully, you know, people it's a it makes it more convenient for people to find all the videos of all these artists. You know, um, mm -hmm. if you're not part of the salsa scene, then you really don't know any of these artists' names, right? You don't know mm -hmm. Adolfo, you don't know Juan Mata, you, you never heard of them, you know? Mm -hmm. So our market are for like people who've never taken a dance class before, introduce them to the market, and then they go, oh, cool, buy some videos, and then they get compensated, we get compensated, everybody wins, you know? Yeah. Um, also, it's gonna have um, events listed, so pretty much the idea was to, uh, like if you're, if you're on Facebook, you're not friends with everyone who is doing all these events, all these DJs and friends, right? So the idea was to list all the events in the United States um, on the app so that if you do travel to a different state, um, you can find where the events are happening. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and that gets updated through word of mouth. People are, they tell us, or you can write it into the app and then we can okay it and then it goes right there. So if you do download the app, the app is free. Okay. Um, you can check the events section. Right now there's nothing in the events because everything is closed, you know? Yes. So anybody who has any ideas of events, congresses, anything, you could contact us. We'll put it onto the app, and it just becomes an informational source for everyone in the United States uh, to find where to go. And then eventually we want to go global and yeah. find all the events. And then we can figure out how to monetize that. Right now it's free, but mm -hmm. we're just, we just want to do something for the community. you know. So that is, that is great. I mean, of course, with now, with during COVID-19, yeah. like everything's kind of at a halt. But we do realize in due time, you know, we will get back into dancing. And, you know, I don't see I do know a few other apps in the dance community, but they're kind of based on the event that they pertain to. Yep. But, you know, um, there's so many. It's, it's really important just to see as a studio owner that you're thinking beyond just the dance floor. Right. Yeah, and, I am. I'm, you know, I love doing the events. Um, I, you know, I don't. You know, I perform and, and I teach, you know, at different congresses. I don't, I'm not like a lot of these guys that do 52 weeks out the, out the year. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll go like to maybe like eight, eight to 10, teach or, you know, work on an agreement and bring my, my students and stuff like that. Um, and I just, I, I, I mean, I love, I love it. Who doesn't love salsa dancing in another state or city, right? Come on. Mm -hmm. Like, it's fun. I just came back from the Hawaii Congress. and I, Luckily, we were able to go to that one. So okay. shout out to Stefan Kent. Um, and Emily Hodges for the Hawaii Congress. Um, that's a beautiful. You have you gone to that one? No, but I definitely am planning to. I have a I have a no. friend named Allison Liu who had been here. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. She was she was here for a while. Yes, yeah, yes, shout yes. Out, shout out to Allison. Shout out to Allison Liu. She's here. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that Congress is dope. The, I mean, the the the. In my opinion, my you know I traveled a little bit. I think Hawaii is probably one of the most beautiful places in the world, bro. Like, ugh. Mm -hmm. and see and that I'm, that's I'm, what I'm saying is from a person like yourself who's traveled Croatia, Hawaii, uh, and such. Like, it's important to kind of understand what your experiences of traveling to other places compared to you being in New York. You know, you know what's cool. Like, okay, uh, I want to. You know, in my opinion, I'm I would go out dancing like every other night. You know. Um, and that's because like I'm cool with like all the venue, uh, like like I'm cool with like uh, Alejandro Boza, you know mm -hmm. Alex Maestro, John John. You know, they, they always invite me to this place, so I go out like every night. So like it's cool to, and you kind of see the same people a lot, you know. So I will say that um, the ones when you travel out, you you see brand new people. It's like it's awesome, you know what I'm saying? So I love it. It's great. Yeah, and and at least you know with us and then slowly transitioning back into the dance scene but like those socials that we have it's going to be a while from now until it's it's not really going to be normal but a new normal 
Um, right. and especially everything that you've been seeing on like on social media. I think it is important that people know that, you know, your school is definitely a place of safe spaces because, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, it's, it's all every- love. you know, um, I even have a couple of um, dance uh, instructors and, and teams hitting me up because um, mm-hmm. they can't find a space to rent. Everything's closed, you know, um, and some people, some places are not even coming back. So I do have some instructors and teams rehearsing in my space, you know, at, at the moment. Um, and they're helping me out because it helps, you know, pay the bills and stuff like that. So, you know, that's another thing, too. If people need some help, I'm always willing to give them some space um, if they want to practice and just kind of vibe out, you know. So that's another thing as well. You know? Yes, definitely. And at least, you know, before we go, I, I yeah. really enjoyed it just having this great conversation because, again, it gives more clarity and context to what you are doing for our scene. Um, I would love for you at least to let – there's two things I would want is – can you just give me an idea of what do you think our our scene is going to look like when we do come back? I think from this, it's going to make us stronger. I think it's going to make us more open to how things really are. Um, I think people are going to develop a, a thicker skin because mm-hmm. um, it's new and, and it's sensitive. Um, and I think people are going to come back stronger than ever. Um, and I think it's going to come back very powerful, you know, once, once all this COVID goes away and I don't know what's going to happen with that. I hope that, I hope, everyone's just safe and, and, and all this passes soon. But, you know, I do have faith in humanity and I have faith in people. Um, and at the end of the day, I feel like we're all human beings. And if you think about salsa, right, it's mm-hmm. salsa. Like we're here to have fun, have a good time and, and de-stress. And now that everyone's at home not doing anything and people are just always posting up on social media, it's kind of killing everyone's energy. So it's like being locked up at home and all these negative news, like people are just tired of it, you know? Yeah. And all, 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 all it takes now is someone just to light a match and I can see people just being pissed off, you know? So I think people are going to develop thicker skin and I, I think it's going to go, uh, definitely going to be a new normal, but I think people are going to come back stronger than ever. That's right. Absolutely. You know, and that's a, a great answer. And at least before we go, can you kind of give the audience uh, more information on what is, coming up new, uh, for the future for yourself, but just more of your contact information and how they can reach you. Sure. So uh, my school is called Nieves Latin Dance Studio. Um, I have two locations, one in Williamsburg, one in the South Bronx. Uh, looks like we're going to open up around August 1st uh, after phase four. I um, also want to give a shout out to the other studio owners that are going to open up as well. Uh, you know, I feel bad. You know, we're all going through the same thing. So don't think um, you're the only one there struggling. It's all of us. Um, so keep your heads up. Um, if you want to uh, register or if you know a friend for beginner classes or intermediate classes, advanced classes, our website is nievesdancestudio.com. You can check us out, find us on Facebook, and we hope to hear from you soon. soon and let's, let's, let's get back to this new norm and, and try to stay positive during negative times, you know? Absolutely. You know, and I thank you so much, Will, for being able to just connect with me and the audience and, you know, get to have some spare time to talk to us because it's important that a person from our scene who really is doing a lot of positive things is looking out for the people, for his students, for the community. And again, like I tell everyone, this was our first interview, but it surely won't be our last. And, you know, absolutely. So I thank you so much. Definitely. So everyone have a good night and stay safe. You too. Love is love. Peace out, guys. Peace. Peace.